grace and peace to you all, and welcome to worship here at Park Church in Streeter, Illinois. I'm Caleb Sadam. I'm the pastor here at Park Church. I'm delighted to be here with you. Now let us begin our worship today by, by listening to these words and preparing our hearts and our minds for worship. Give all glory and honor to the living God, Jesus Christ. We are here because Christ destroyed death and by his resurrection gives us eternal life. Our God is the God of the living. All who die in him do not die, but live eternally in his presence. Let us worship the Lord Jesus Christ together. We open our hearts to the Lord, just as he opened his to us. Let us pray. God of amazing love, open our hearts and minds in this hour of worship. Let us give our whole selves to you, and may you guide us to be true to our calling as your children. Help us to guide one another in love, strengthen one another in the faith, and rely on one another as true sisters and brothers. We pray all this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, we have been ransomed from, fruit, from the futile things by Jesus Christ. We need not fear condemnation, but instead come to the throne of grace to repent boldly and trust in God's power and, and his will to forgive and transform. Let us pray together in God and receive God's grace. Merciful God, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of the world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. The profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste in the land, lay waste the land and pollute the seas. The fears and jealousies that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom of intellect and reason, and turn them into bonds of oppression. Lords have mer Lord, have mercy on us. Heal us. Forgive us. Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Amen. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God tells us that this is not the end for us. Our sin and our mistakes and our broken bodies are not the end, but instead we are cleansed and reconciled to God, and we hope in the eternal life that he brings. Friends, hear the good news and rejoice. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, redeemed, and resurrected. Thanks be to God. Now, as we go to the reading of the word read and proclaimed, let us seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit in prayer. Gracious God, Move in us. Let us hear your word in these mere human words. And let us know you more. Let us hear the message that you have for us today. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the first psalm. Listen now for the word of God. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the paths that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff and the wind that, that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And our second reading is John chapter 17, uh, the whole thing. Um, so dig in. If you want to grab a Bible and follow along, feel free to do so. But listen now for the word of God. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, so that your son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. 
They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, you gave to them, you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know it and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves i have given them your word and the word has ha and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as i do not belong to the world i am not asking you to take them out of the world but i ask you to protect them from the evil one they do not belong to the world just as i do not belong to the world sanctify them in the truth your word is truth as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that these also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, <clears throat> when I was in seminary, uh, there was a time when one of my classmates was going through uh, really one of the most difficult times of his life. Um, he was having some heavy life troubles, and, and one day several of us gathered around him with the pastor to students, and uh, we had an open conversation with him, and, and we prayed for him. And I remember in this prayer, we, we each all ended up saying things about the guy that were really positive, uh, things that we, we all thought about him but never shared. And uh, after the fact, he was, he was kind of shocked that, you know, we all thought this stuff. Uh, of course, after all, you know, a prayer is kind of an odd place to compliment people. Uh, but he was very shocked and very deeply touched to hear how much that we all really cared about him. Uh, I guess most of us were uh, not particularly good at communicating how much we care about a person uh, in just the you know, normal, everyday course of living. And I, I, you know, I think most of us, we try and behave... Um, toward the people that we care about in uh, a positive way and in a way that, you know, seeks the best for them. But um, the full extent of our love, of our affection, our care for them uh, really isn't always obvious, is it? You know, I, I feel that a lot about God's love for us um, and, and how God's love for us is communicated and talked about in the Bible. Um, you know, all the way through, all the way through the Bible, we hear about God's love for us, and, and, and we see these, these, these loving actions of God done for our benefit, benefit but we don't often encounter a scene where uh, God is conveying the depths of God's love for us. But here, in this reading from John, Jesus' love is, is on full display here in chapter, 16, chapter 17 of John. This is Jesus speaking completely candidly with God the Father, 
And the affection that Jesus has for his disciples is, is, is just dripping out of the whole thing. And in the course of this prayer, he prays, he prays primarily for three things for his disciples. First, he prays for the disciples' unity with one another. Jesus references a hope that they would all be one, as he and God the Father are one. And really, that's amazing that, that, that Jesus would be using this kind of language because we understand, that, we understand that, that Jesus and God the Father are the same, like the, the, the very same entity. Uh, the church has long affirmed that the three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, are of the same substance, to use philosophical terms, um, that they're literally, in, in the very foundation of their being, the very same. The church has long affirmed this, uh, and now, but, but this is obviously physically impossible for us, for, for you know, uh, two or three human beings to be physically the exact same person. That, 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 that can't happen. Uh, so, this, so, so when Jesus is talking about this unity, this, this unity in the same way that he and God the Father have unity, it's obviously referring to a unity of, of mind, a unity of spirit, a unity of, of bond. Now, elsewhere in the New Testament, the disciples are extolled to be of one mind. Um, indeed, this is a large part of Jesus' ministry, to bring all humanity together in the bonds of love. And that unity can be found in something else that Jesus prays for, faith. Jesus prays for the disciples' faith. He prays for the disciples, both those ones that followed Jesus when he was bodily, physically walking around earth, and all the disciples yet to come. He prays for all of us to know him and to know God the Father. And the, the, the faith is both the center of the entire Christian enterprise, since without faith, well, then the church doesn't exist, it's, it's not only the center of the Christian enterprise, but it is what brings us salvation. And I'm not just talking about the salvation after our death. Having that relationship with God is, is salvation right here and right now. The, the deep contact with the creator, the, the redeemer, the sustainer of the universe, that, that being in communication and in communion with the foundation of all being that brings us an existence that just transcend, transcends the kind of existence that uh, we review as just mundane here on the earth. The third thing that Jesus prays for is the protection of his disciples. He knows that his disciples face a challenging time ahead, and they would indeed face persecution uh, through the, 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 the years immediately following Jesus' ascension. Uh, there was great persecution, uh, and in the centuries following that, uh, there was persecution throughout the Roman Empire of Christians, and in fact, of the original 12 disciples, or even not even just the, if the original 12 disciples, uh, only one would live into old age. And of the 11 who died, 10 of them were killed because of their activities in the ministry of Jesus Christ. The remaining one to die for a different reason, was Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. But Jesus knew too well that there exists among creation a state of hostility toward God, and that would resist Jesus, resist the change that Jesus brings, and, and that would work to stop all those who follow Jesus and seek to do his will. This, this force, this kind of state of, of enmity toward Jesus, toward God, um, that's what Je Christ is referring to when he talks about the world. Uh, I'm, I'm in the world, they're in the world, but we're not of the world, um, and the world hates them. It's not, uh, this, the word used here does not mean the world as in like how we usually use the world, right? Uh, when, when you and I use the word world in conversation, we're talking about planet Earth. We're talking about the, the, the people in the world. We're talking about the stuff that we can see and, and, touch, and touch and everything. Um, but the word that Christ is using here is this it's like a, a realm of existence that is against God. Uh, and that's different from the, from the world that we typically talk about. Um, but within the world we typically talk about is this world that is hostile to God. So Jesus knows that this is going to happen. Jesus knows that Jesus knows what is coming, knows the kind of uh, opposition they're going to face, and he prays for strength in the midst of this. He doesn't pray for God to take the disciples out of that. 
and then preserved them, but enabled them to continue in the face of this persecution, in the face of this resistance. And, and he's, he's praying for them, not just for the sake of like protecting the people that he's sending out to, to go do the mission, and, 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 you know, protecting them for the sake of the mission, but protecting them because he loves them. Uh, he, he, we are not just worth something to God because of what we can do for God's mission. We're, we're just worth something to God just because we are, just because we exist, just because we are God's children. And that this, this love is, it was honestly quite shocking to me um, because it can be very easy to think that um, since all who have faith in God, since all who God love are called to mission, it's very easy to think that that's all God cares about. It is okay. Hey, you're you're in you're in the uh, the covenant community now. Hey, great, good. Here's your membership badge now. Go out and make more people, make more disciples. But no, God loves us more than just as cogs in the machine, as more than just workers for the kingdom. Jesus prays for all of these benefits for us. And as with all things in the Christian life, you know, we have a role to play in making these things happen. The first psalm gives us great instruction on how to reap the benefits of these. The psalmist writes that the people who delight in God are like trees planted by streams of water. In this metaphor, we are, the, we are of course, the tree, and the, and the stream is the Holy Scriptures. As scholar Jim Lindbergh wrote, as water is to a healthy tree, so the scriptures are to a healthy spiritual life. Attaining the things that Jesus prayed for, this, this unity, this, this faith, this protection, this can all be, can be gained through immersing ourselves in the scriptures. Jesus prayed for our faith. The faith gets nourished and grown by the spirit working through scripture and keeping the character of God in our minds always, and, and constantly telling us of God's love for us. Jesus prays for our unity. We, we achieve unity through all of us having the mind of Christ. And that's not possible apart from all of us immersing ourselves in the Scripture and reading of the character of Jesus Christ and seeking to be like Jesus. Jesus prayed for our safety, and while we still may suffer and still may die because of our work for the gospel, we get strength and grace and joy to endure the hard times through the witness to the love of God that is the Holy Scripture. God has an absolutely unbelievable love for us, and it's there for us to embrace and to grow in. So let us then plant ourselves, by, plant ourselves as trees by the stream and grow in unity, grow in faith, and grow in strength to endure. Let us always know in every second of our lives that we are loved deeply by the God who has created us all and who is constantly at work for life, for the long and eternal life of all of us. Amen. Friends, let us pray for the church, for the world, for all in it. Let's pray. O oh Lord, we pray to you for the life of us all, that churches of all traditions may discover their unity in Christ and exercise their gifts in service of all. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. That, earth may, that the earth may be freed from war, famine, and disease, and the air, soil, and water cleansed of poison, we pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer that those who govern and maintain peace in every land may exercise their powers in obedience to your commands. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer. That you will strengthen this nation to pursue just priorities so that the races may be reconciled, the young educated, the old care for, cared for, the hungry filled, and the homeless housed, and the sick comforted and healed. We pray to you, O God, hear our prayer that you will preserve all who live and work in this city in peace and safety. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer. That you will comfort and empower those who face any difficult or trial, the sick, the disabled, the poor, the oppressed, 
those who grieve and those in prison. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer. That you will accept our thanksgiving for all faithful servants of Christ now at rest, who with us await a new heaven and a new earth, your everlasting kingdom. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, as a potter fashions a vessel from humble clay, you form us into new creation. Shape us day by day through the cross of Christ your Son until we pray as continually as we breathe and all our acts are prayer. Through Jesus Christ and in the ministry of the, of the Holy Spirit, we pray in the manner which our Lord taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, having been confronted and convicted and comforted by the word of God, let us give to God what is God's. If you can continue to, con to support your local congregation financially, we thank you and we greatly appreciate that. But if you cannot afford to do so, that is fine because there are so many, many more ways that you can upbuild the kingdom of heaven. We offer to God our thoughts, our prayers, our kind words, and our loving actions. So friends, let us take a moment to rededicate ourselves to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. O Lord, our God, we want to follow all your commandments, to love only you, not worshiping the things of this world, to love our neighbor freely, not desiring for ourselves something they possess. Accept these offerings, we pray, and teach us to be generous, giving fully of ourselves that we may truly be the body of Christ in this world. Amen. Friends, go knowing that God loves you. Go knowing that in all things you are empowered by God, that the amazing God of the universe works through you and is there for us. And all we need to do is plant ourselves by that stream of Scripture and give our hearts earnestly to Christ and let the Spirit mold our understanding. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you grace. Grace not to sell yourself short, but grace to risk something big for something good. Grace enough to know the world is now too small for anything but the truth and too terrified for anything but love. God, take your minds and think through them. God, take your lips and speak through them. God, take your hearts and set them on fire, and God, take your hands and work through them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.